G'day folks. Well, I'm just starting to get into the uh, 3SGE teardown a little bit more. Um, as you can see, I've got the inlet manifold off now. <laughs> Interesting little system. It has a uh, sort of vacuum operated, uh, what would you call it? It'd be a uh, little, it's like a sub throttle body essentially it's uh, it's only on the inlet you've got two two inlet ports per cylinder and the injector spraying right in the center you notice the injectors are actually mounted on the head so the injectors up in here and you're kind of halving or modulating your airflow with this uh, T-Viz system this is the one that I said can has been known to drop screws down the intake and you see they're all all still there so that's a good thing, but I'm not too sure about actually putting the uh, GE head on the FE block. I've been doing more research on them and apparently the FE engine has cast iron or cast internals, whereas this GE has all forged internals. So either I look at the condition of the crank and everything in this and just see whether or not it could be reground and uh, rebuilt. Or I look at a uh, Japanese import half cut. I was looking at one on eBay just before. It's a Toyota Cardina with the 3SGE Beams engine. Uh, it comes with a 20,000k six month warranty and everything for $2,200. And that's the whole front cut of the car. It's got the whole loom, the dashboard, all the electronics, the transmission, the front end, everything. So that's not completely unreasonable for a guaranteed and tested 3SGE, but the thing is, I think it's up in uh, Queensland or New South Wales, so shipping's going to be a fair bit on top of that 2200. So if anyone in uh, the Melbourne area knows of a good Melbourne-based uh, JDM half-cut importer that can get 3SGE, or even better yet, a decent tested or even a cheap rebuildable 3S GTE half cut, that would be awesome. I mean, if, if I buy a 3S GTE, it's guaranteed to have had a pretty hard life, so I'd have to go through and rebuild the whole thing from top to bottom, but a, um, a 3S GE out of a Cardina or something like that, I'd be half tempted just to uh, drop it into little Betty over there and uh, give her a bit more horsepower. Everything apart from the rear differential and the uh, suspension can pretty much handle up to 225 horsepower, I think it is. The front end anyway, the rear diff suffers, but the gearbox on the RAV4 can handle 225 horsepower or so, which is pretty good. It's almost double what it's already putting out. So, yeah, let's uh, strip the rest of this off and try and get the head off tonight. Um, yeah, that's the beams, well, not beams, um... TVs system. Don't know if it's actually required or not, but all of this GE stuff is going in the box so that it can, uh, yeah, if I do need it, it's there. And the inlet again, you've got pairs of inlets, not a lot to it. Wouldn't be hard to adapt to the FE system, but it looks like having the whole GE loom. Uh, I'm not sure, I didn't get the brain box for it, but having the whole GE setup would be handy if I do use it. But if I do get a half cut instead, and gut that out and put that in the little Betty Rav, well, I think she'd be a lot happier with me than trying to make an abomination of a uh, very worn and somewhat noisy 3SFE. Because I have a good feeling not all of the clatter that comes from Betty's engine is from the top end. I have a feeling it may also be uh, bottom, well not bottom end, but gudgeon pins or something. There's a chance that it's that, not guaranteed, but there's always a chance. So putting, a, putting this head on her engine could be a complete waste of money. Whereas if I actually get a full GE or GTE engine and either rebuild it or use it as it is, well, that might be a lot better bet, especially since it has a forged crank instead of a cast iron crank. Uh, forged rods instead of cast iron rods. But we'll find out what condition this is in. This has had a really nasty life, so either it's going to be complete trash, 
or there's going to be a fair bit salvageable. Hell, I might even be able to send the crank and the block and everything off for Rico and build a decent GE out of it. I don't know. It's worth a shot. Hmm. Well, we might have a problem, Houston. <laughs> That's how you break a breaker bar. Well, it's not even a breaker bar, it's just an extension. A rigid right angle extension bar. Yeah, the rattle gun won't move it. That's not going to move it. There's a ball bearing. Yeah, that's moving. I'll get that out again, but yeah, it's going to take a bit of oomph to get that uh, harmonic balancer bolt out. Oh well. It's got a new, new timing belt on near new. You can still see the printing and everything on it. Yeah, timing belt's nice. The whole kit looks like the whole kit's been done, the water pump's been done, the housing's been done. Water pump's probably dried out, the seal's probably dried out, so I would never use that again, but the uh, housing itself is well worth keeping in stock. But the rest of it, well, who knows? Judging by the goo around the uh, seals and everything, it looks like they've probably done the head on it not long ago. Done the head timing belt and everything. And then it spun a bearing. Oh well. Okay folks, well it's uh, actually a few days on. I did get the bolt out, but that was about as far as I got and I just sort of left it. So I'm gonna get back into it shortly. Uh, I did end up drilling through the head enough to stretch it and uh, release the pressure on it and then just spun out by hand. It certainly wasn't lock tighted, it was just extremely tight. So yeah, I'm going to uh, look at stripping all this off soon. Uh, maybe not this afternoon, I've got a lot going on at work and everything now so it might turn into a week thing or something like that. Um, yeah, we certainly get a looks like the oil pump on this one bolts on the front uh, as a separate part of the front cover. The RAV4 is, I think, is part of the front cover and you have to remove the whole thing. This one seems to have a bolted flange around it. That's not a bad idea. That'd be something to could probably graft onto the uh, 3S FE. And it might still be part of the front cover. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe that just, yeah, bolts up against the block. Yeah, I think it is still part of that front casting where you have to take the sump off to get the casting out because I think that's that's either a pickup or part of the overflow return. That might be the pickup. No, I think the pickup's down there, that's probably return and then through there is, yeah, there's the main oil gallery, so there's a spring-loaded um, pressure regulator valve in there, an unloader valve, and on there is where the sump pickup goes down to the bottom of the, the sump to pick, pick up the oil on the low pressure suction side. So yeah, high pressure comes out through here and down to the filter and then off to the main galleries, up to the head and down to the uh, crankshaft mains. So that's how it works because that's the outlet from the filter and that's the inlet. Yeah, pretty straightforward. It's good head. Actually looking at a uh, 3SGE Beams engine half cut on eBay uh, they're about 2000 to 2200 dollars but that's still really cheap when you consider you get the whole engine transmission all the electronics the loom it's basically the front half of the car from the steering wheel back just cut off so you got from the steering wheel and dashboard forwards com complete apart from headlights and wheels and tires and that sort of stuff it's just the front end cut off uh, unnecessary external stripped but the radiator and everything's all still in there it's just an engine power pack still in the front end and you can pick them up for 2200 bucks it's always recommended to uh, pull them down and uh, give them a bit of a refresh even a re-ring if necessary but a lot of the time like the one I was looking at comes with a 20,000 K warranty on it so they've obviously run the thing and done full testing on it and they're willing to stand by a uh, 20,000 K warranty so you'd almost be tempted just to get it running again verify that there aren't any unusual noises or issues with it and then just put it in a car. That's actually a really cheap way to do an engine swap. Um, getting a fully rebuilt 3SGE in Australia probably cost you 20 grand, um, not 20, uh, 2 grand and you're basically just getting the long motor. You might get all the manifolds and stuff with it but again a rebuilt 3SFE head or 3SGE head can run you a thousand dollars. 
for a, a new or a Ricoh one, depending where you get it from. Uh, I think Brad said that some of the old, older Toyota heads are worth a thousand bucks all day long as a, as a shaved and refreshed, pre pressure tested uh, cylinder head. So it's actually not that expensive when you look at it. It's, it's the price of a good second hand car, but it's a 3SGE Beams engine, so it's like 200 horsepower and it bolts straight into a RAV4. So rebuilding parts of this one and trying to make it all work on the weak old FE block is probably not the best idea. Because as I've said before, these have a forged crank, forged rods, basically forged everything, whereas the FE is a lightweight cast engine for cheaper, um, more economy-based cars rather than performance. So chances are, if I put this GE head on little Betty Rav and get everything working right, I'm going to end up ruining that bottom end real quick. So, yeah. Might be best to keep keep what I can for spares, but look at buying a 3SGE half cut when Betty's engine gets too tired. Like, it's it's getting noisier. I don't think it's all top end either. I'm starting to wonder if it is wrist pins. Because somebody did go through the problem that I've got, and the mechanic redid all the head, and said there's still noise here. Something's still not right. So that's kind of put me off it, and uh, yeah. And my phone's ringing. Oh well. That's all the in that's all for this one for now and uh thanks for watching. As you can see I've been a bit busier in this corner.